<laughs> Thanks, Mayor. And he's, before he leaves, he's heard me say this a couple of times. There's a lot to do with city government, obviously, as he's, he, as he's noted. And each mayor brings a different skill set. But I will say, without question, that this mayor definitely knows the fiscal components of what it takes to run a city. So he's the right person for the right time. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. We have a couple of speakers as well, um, including myself, but I have a few remarks to kick off the, the address. And each year we pick a theme, and this theme um, this year is riding the waves and also keeping the pace. So one of the things that takes place with this each year is how we take a look at where we came from, what happened in the previous year, how we navigate, how we build a foundation. So 2011, is about riding those waves, and one of those waves is we need to continue doing things smart. We're good at that. Librarians get that simply by the nature of the work that they do, the thinking that they do, but we also, as the mayor said, have many things in our advantage to do so. Perceptions are people's realities. Information consumers in our information economy are the realities for libraries. In the 20th century, libraries were identified through books. In the 21st century, libraries are identified by the online world and community. What matters about this is not a decline in literacy. What matters is that there's a new image of literacy. I'm sure you can remember when there was a time, and quite likely there still is a time, when people argued that reading on a computer did not constitute literacy. I would expect that if it doesn't already exist, that literacy testing will include such things as Facebook, Twitter, and other types of social media tools. I'm guessing the letter R and the letter U will be some of the words, new words in the Webster's Dictionary from texting language. Keep in mind, we continue to provide traditional services, and traditions evolve. We have thousands of print and media materials, phones that ring, library programming, and storytelling. And while we're growing our services to the perception of the information of consumers, the next wave we have to ride is turning the Titanic into keeping pace. So the Titanic came up in a conversation in a department meeting about transitioning out CDs to downloadable vid videos or downloadable audios, which we're already doing, and have some momentum to that. But it came mostly about DVDs to streaming video. And if libraries are riding the waves to stay afloat, they will always have transitioning collections. I'm sure many of you can remember we don't have newspaper clippings, we don't have LPs. We don't have cassette tapes. All of those things were here when I first arrived. We always have collections in transition. We don't have the financial resources to be everything to everybody, no matter how much people come in the libraries every day and they want to know, what did you do with X? So we have to be smart and we have to be able to keep pace. And we also have a responsibility to gauge to the best of our knowledge with the library policies what the community as a whole is asking us to do, but we have to keep pace with what that is. So take our, tra our transition with social media. We started training staff five years ago. Think about what our statistics and funding might look like today if we hadn't started that five years ago. We'd be in a world of hurt the numbers would be nowhere near what they are today if we had not started five years ago. And that, to me, was not at the beginning of the wave, but it certainly was um, before it crested. So we've started the conversation about the transition of DVDs, and it might be a step forward, and we might take a step back, but it is about transitioning. So in every wave, or in every, every change, there are different sizes of waves. And for each wave of evolution in technology, there's always those that are going to be out in advance of the big wave. And there are some that will never leave the beach. 
Our job, our survival, is to help the community prepare for the next wave. In order to ride it out, get back to the beach safely, and get back on the surfboard and do it again. So there really are evolutions. And while we may not be necessarily the in inventors of things, although I think there are instances in library services where we certainly are, we definitely have to be early adopters to move a community forward. So what does it mean for us in our image? It means that we're cartographers. Some of you have seen this image before. We're map makers. We tell you where the next wave will be. And as, for example, part of that in our uh, strategic plan when we picked a new ILS system, it gave us a 19% increase <coughs> in circulation. And that would be physical formats. 19% increase in the first three months. We also are planning for two new branches, as we know, the East in 2012, and all things going well, the West in the winter of 2013. And Superintendent Dr. Mitchell is here to talk with us for a few minutes about that, as, long, as well as Deb Arn. They're both fellow surfers with us in this 21st century libraries. <clears throat> So the information economy will continue to compress how quickly those waves come. You can see that by radio's 38 years, television's 13, internet is 4, and Facebook for 100 million users was 9 months. They're going to come fast and crust and we have to be ready for that. So think about it in the same context. Our traditional services are very solid, they keep evolving, but think about this. With the Knowledge Network, we're going to the back to the past. And we're bringing that history forward in a way that wasn't accessible. I think that's a really great and indicative dynamic of how we value our history, but how we bring that forward in such a way that it's accessible in this information economy. Think about the thousands of links that we most recently changed from Delicious to Diego. You know, that's, that's a big deal to take all that information and transition it. It's all about how to ride the wave and how to make those transitions and know that we very much <coughs> do that. You get the video link? On the, okay. It's on, it's on. What I'm going to, Stephanie had shown a video that has some really good information as it relates to the conversation. But these are just a couple of highlights I want you to keep in mind when you're taking a look at that. 78% trust peer to peer recommendation. We pretty much have known that. But truly, that's about you in connection both in a physical and an online world. 78% trust peer-to-peer -peer relationships. That's a big deal for librarians to be prominent and active within those worlds. YouTube, second largest search engine in the world. It's got to be about the visual. 78% of 18 to 33 year olds have watched television on the web. Only 33% have ever viewed it on a DVR or a TiVo. A third of the population will not use TV as their access. And there's another statistic that's out there, I think it's in the video that talks about um, it's reversed where China, um, I think it was like 70%, I may be wrong, they only view television through their computers. So, who want to bring a video up? 